Your allergic dog won't stop scratching. You've tried some of my suggested home remedies and they haven't been helping. These are my top five natural remedies in the exact order, the exact dose that I would be using if I were to have an allergic dog. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Click there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications. Then when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book. Allergies are super frustrating and they're one of the most difficult veterinary diseases to treat. Say your dog has been diagnosed with allergy. Like the very first thing is go through some of my previous videos and ensure that one, your dog doesn't have external parasites. They don't have the thing such as a flea allergy. Number two, do a proper food allergy. And I'll link to some of my other videos showing you how to do a proper food allergy test. Then number three, and this is where most dogs fall into, your dog has environmental allergy, also known as atopy or atopic dermatitis. There's a number of different things going on in the body that cause it, that trigger these pro-inflammatory responses. So it means you need to use a number of specific remedies if you're gonna be able to manage this without using things like corticosteroids. If Tula were to be diagnosed with atopy, environmental allergy, number one, the first thing I would have her on at high doses, omega-3 fatty acids, specifically krill oil. There are literally hundreds of studies showing a clear benefit of the omega-3 fatty acids in terms of decreasing the allergic response. And they're working in multiple different ways. But specifically, the omega-3 fatty acids are considered the anti-inflammatory fatty acids. So they're decreasing many of these inflammatory mediators which trigger that itch scratch cycle. Krill oil in particular is high levels of EPA, DHA, and it appears in some dogs it's better bioavailable, meaning it's better absorbed. We're looking at an allergy dog dose of about 500 milligrams of krill for 20 to 25 pounds of body weight daily, meaning little Tula, she get one of these capsules a day. And regardless of what other uh, home remedies we're gonna use, I'd always ensure that she's on these. Like that's, you know, by far and away, it's got more studies than any other remedy out there. You're looking at high levels of the omega-3 fatty acids. Number two, we need something to rapidly decrease the itching plant steroids. The thing with a dog that's itching is you just want to give your dog something just to stop the itching. Give them some relief. And the big benefit of corticosteroids that many of you probably use prescribed in your vet is that you give a tablet and in a short period of time like the itching stops. You're like, ah. Oh. So you almost need like, is there not a natural corticosteroid? There have been studies on one plant sterol called beta cystosterol. It's isolated from things such as olive oil, from soybeans, and it can help decrease the level of itching. Typically it's used in people to one, help lower cholesterol levels and or two, to help treat benign prostatic hyperplasia. We're looking at doses of about 100 milligrams of the beta testosterone for 20 pounds of body weight daily. This capsule here, it also contains flaxseed oil, another great anti-inflammatory omega 3 fatty acid. Great if your dog gets this in conjunction with the krill. But the beta cetosterol, there's about 150 milligrams of it. So if I was gonna dose Tula, I'd be giving her about a three quarters of this capsule a day. So you've tried the krill, you've tried the beta cetosterol, the dog's still itching, like say you've done it for a good two to four weeks, you're like, okay, now what next? Three, a flavonoid I've talked a lot about for many different conditions, quercetin. Kerosene has been studied for a variety of different veterinary conditions. In particular, it's a flavonoid or a medicinally beneficial substance. It would get some of the color that produces the color of red in an apple peel or else the red that comes out of a red onion. Both of those have quite high levels of kerosene. Kerosene has also been studied for allergy, in particular, atopy. A pretty standard dog dose is about 100 milligrams of quercetin for 10 pounds of body weight daily. She's 20 pounds, you get about 200 milligrams. These capsules, they contain 250 milligrams of quercetin, so I'd be inclined to give a little Tula one of these capsules a day. And I would just incorporate that with your krill, with the beta cetosterol, as well as then the quercetin. But say you've tried all three of those and it's been eight weeks, your dog is still itching. You're like, oh, now what? You start going through my videos, and you're like, I don't know, what do I do next? 
So what I would do, personally, I'd be like, okay, we ate great, there's some good results with the kerosene, but it doesn't appear that it's working. Personally, what I would do, I would stick with the krill, I'd still stick with this, the plant sterol, the beta cetosterol. Then I would swap out this kerosene for a natural antihistamine, and what would that be? It would be this, nettle. Nettle's been shown to be very beneficial for some people that have allergies, and it can also be helpful for your dogs. The thing is, you never know for sure, like whose dog is going to respond which way, you know, to which specific remedy or supplement. So that's why there's a little bit of trial and error. But it's been like eight weeks, that's the next thing I would do. I'm probably inclined to stop the kerosene. I'm giving you this tool, I'd mix this into a food, this yummy nettle. And regardless, you could stay on the nettle. It's very inexpensive, it's super good for her. Very high in some B vitamins, decent amount of iron, and a good potential to decrease the amount of itching naturally. You can get this, which is the dry nettle. So this is about 2,000 milligrams, and it's about a teaspoon or so. You know, a pretty standard dose, about a half a teaspoon, about 1,000 milligrams per 20 pounds of body weight daily. So I'd be mixing about half of this amount into two of this food. And I'd be doing that for another four weeks, assessing how she's responding or not. Let's just say you've tried all four of those and still, like, still your dog is itching. You're like, okay, maybe it's gotten a little bit better. Maybe it hasn't. You're like, Ugh, what now? 95% curcumin. Curcumin is isolated from the plant turmeric. It's the active ingredient. It's got some great anti-inflammatory properties. Been shown to be very beneficial for many of our animals that have arthritis. We can also decrease the level of inflammation that's going on in the skin. So finger allergies, little poodle. Part of the issue with curcumin is getting it to be absorbed. So what has been studied and found with people is we'll actually give them piperine, which is ground black pepper. That may help with absorption. You know, dogs aren't crazy about ground black pepper. They're okay with fat, so it really helps to give it with additional fat. So at the very least, you wanna make sure that your dog is eaten first, and then you'll be giving the curcumin. There are some newer formulations of curcumin which make it better absorbed. So this brand of curcumin in particular, this Theracumin, it is much more bioavailable, meaning much more of the curcumin is then absorbed to actually be bioactive. I would suggest doses of the Theracumin of 30 milligrams per 20 pounds of body weight twice daily. This will happen, these are 60 milligram capsules, meaning you will be getting about one capsule a day. Once again, you're gonna have to give it for a good four weeks before then you can assess the response. So if you have a dog that's been diagnosed with atopy, environmental allergy, that's kind of the biggest remedies I have you focus on. You know, you're starting with one to two, you know, with the krill, like a good omega-3 fatty acid, adding in next beta cetosterol, a natural plant steroid that's gonna help decrease the inflammation. So then after that, you can then add in and or substitute some of those other remedies that we just discussed, you know, the kerosene, the nettle, the 95% curcumin. And then be fine if you want to use all of those remedies. But generally I find, you know, sort of, you know, two to three is kind of the maximum you want to go with. And, you know, then you can know like what's working, what's not working. Every dog is a different individual. Not every dog is going to respond the same way. Super frustrating to disease, and I, you know, seeing it so often in veterinary practice, and it's so hard to like. Okay, I wish, you know, there's one thing you could just like, uh, you know, ultimately stop the itching, have your dog feel that much better, but you can manage it, and at the very least, you can decrease the level of itching, make it more comfortable for your dog. Hopefully, when you're sort of playing around with some of these better remedies, the one that have studies, show that they can be beneficial for atopic dermatitis. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets of what you can do for your dog with allergies. Click up there to subscribe, hit the bell that's on for notifications, then we click the link directly in the box below. I can send you a copy of my free book.